Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, Biden Xi Summit won't save a declining relationship. I would like to focus on the commentary in Bloomberg Opinion by Dr. Hal Brands, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, where he studies U.S. foreign policy and defense strategy. Concurrently, Dr. Hal Brands is the Henry A. Kissinger Distinguished Professor of Global Affairs at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, SAIS. He is also a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. The People's Republic of China is a Leninist state run by a party that believes the struggle for power is unceasing and unforgiving. Know that. And you'll know what yesterday's meeting between President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping does and doesn't mean. It does mean that Xi, like Biden, has good tactical reasons for talking. It doesn't mean that China is any less determined to overtake the U.S. as the country that sets the terms of global order, or that any amount of dialogue can change that fact. The build-up to this meeting was substantial. Multiple U.S. officials trekked to Beijing in recent months. Chinese Foreign Affairs Chief Wang Yi met with American counterparts in Malta and Washington. Both sides understand the importance of high-level diplomacy at this moment. Biden wants to show that America is responsibly managing a critical relationship. He needs calm in Asia amid violent crises in Europe and the Middle East. She is trying not to spook the electorate in Taiwan ahead of presidential elections in January. He could use a break from international tensions as China's economy stagnates. He presumably hopes more soothing rhetoric and more moderate diplomacy will undercut momentum toward tougher policies by the U.S. The meeting itself produced some outcomes, modest movement in climate change negotiations. An agreement to discuss risks associated with artificial intelligence, a Chinese commitment to crack down on fentanyl production, progress toward more extensive military to military ties. As before, Biden voiced his desire to ensure that competition does not veer into conflict. She offered that planet Earth is big enough for the two countries to succeed. There's less here than meets the eye. China intends to use AI to bolster its authoritarian system. The U.S. must encourage its development in ways that help democracies retain their global edge. A meeting between Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and his Chinese counterpart would open an additional channel of interaction, but don't think the People's Liberation Army will stop behaving dangerously in the Western Pacific or that it will answer the phone in a crisis if the Pentagon calls. Another recent breakthrough in the relationship, an incipient dialogue on arms control, isn't a bad thing. So long as everyone understands China has shown no sign of halting its rapid-fire nuclear buildup, all of which indicates how little this meeting changes the trajectory of a deteriorating relationship. The U.S. has been strengthening its position en route to the summit. In the past year, the Pentagon has unveiled new weapons programs, such as its replicator drone initiative, aimed at China. Washington has concluded new basing agreements in Asia and engaged in tireless diplomacy to rally coalitions, military, economic, diplomatic, technological, against Beijing. Biden has also slapped new, albeit very narrow, restrictions on U.S. investment in China, while refining export controls that constrict the flow of advanced semiconductors to that country's firms. Western countries, led by the U.S., have implemented all-round containment, encirclement and suppression against us, she announced in March. He probably never expected anything less. She like most Chinese Communist Party potentates, has long seen the relationship with Washington as fundamentally adversarial. A document prepared near the outset of his rule argued that there is a deadly ideological conflict between Western democracy and China's socialist regime. And not surprisingly, 
He sees U.S.-China affairs through the prism of a party that treats politics, domestic and international, as a zero-sum pursuit. The laws of the jungle of international competition have not changed, she told Chinese military officials in 2014. All that matters, he added a year later, is whether you have strength and whether you can use that strength. Relying on a silver tongue won't work. Indeed, Xi Jinping's goal is to create an Asia, and a world, that takes its cues from China, to build a future where we will win the initiative and have the dominant position, he said in 2012. So even as Xi parleys with Biden, China is preparing for trouble. According to the Pentagon, China has fielded 500 new advanced fighter jets since 2022. Every year, the conventional balance in Asia shifts in China's favor. By 2030, Beijing's nuclear arsenal will approach parity with that of the U.S. Meanwhile, China is seeking a stranglehold over key components of the modern economy, such as rare earth minerals and telecommunications, while trying to reduce its dependence on the democratic world. As she explained in 2020, China must fight tough battles for the key core technologies. Perhaps China will use those capabilities in a military showdown. Or perhaps it simply hopes to accumulate such power that war becomes unnecessary. But either way, Beijing is getting ready for a test of strength. That's a depressing thought. But retaining the ability to preserve the international system America has constructed first requires realism about the challenges that system confronts. If Xi Jinping's statements are any guide, he won't deceive himself about what this or any other diplomatic meeting can achieve. Washington shouldn't deceive itself, either. That's all. Biden-Xi summit won't save a declining relationship. By Dr. Hal Brands, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, where he studies U.S. foreign policy and defense strategy. Concurrently, Dr. Brands is the Henry A. Kissinger Distinguished Professor of Global Affairs at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, SAIS.